If you're faced with the task of commuting in an urban area, then a micro car or city car may be right for you. And this is Scion's latest entry, the 2012 IQ. Spend a day with the IQ and you'll quickly budget extra time to allow for the car's huge curiosity factor. Everyone wants to know about the world's smallest four-seater. Initially engaged by its toy car appearance, inquisitive minds fire off questions ranging from fuel economy to driving impressions. How much does it cost and why would you buy one? All excellent inquiries with corresponding answers that unfolded during my test week. I'm married, live in the suburbs, and have a seven-year-old daughter, so Scion isn't targeting the IQ to me. I balanced my time with the IQ, doing things we always do as a family, while also evaluating it from a city dweller's perspective, the way the IQ will actually be used. First, let me state the obvious. You buy the IQ because you want a really small car. It also doesn't hurt that at 37 MPG, it gets the highest combined fuel economy rating of any gas-only vehicle on the market. But by and large, there must be serious space issues you're facing, whether it be parking or maneuverability. It's 10 feet long, which is still over 14 inches longer than a Smart for Two. But remember, the IQ has rear seats. Taller drivers find themselves basically sitting at the rear of the car, which makes the prospect of parallel parking in tight spots that much easier to navigate. And the incredibly small 25-foot turning diameter makes city street U-turns not only ridiculously simple, but fun. And that aspect is one that caught me by surprise. The IQ zips and darts through traffic with go-kart-like maneuvers, accentuated by really lively steering, and an engine that plays immeasurably bigger than its 1.3 liter size. Driving a car with such a short wheelbase takes some getting used to. For instance, you'll initially cut the wheel too soon when reversing, and the IQ scurries through the asphalt jungle like a bumper car on roller skates. The front wheels are always changing directions. It surely keeps the driver involved with no need to take your hands off the wheel, seeing as how this CVT is the only transmission choice. Equipped with a sport mode, it's here to promote fuel economy and does a yeoman's job of extracting the most from the 94 horsepower engine. And Scion gets it by giving the 2100 pound IQ a quick off the line feel that's appreciated in city traffic. Its country road and highway manners really surprised me with its nonchalant ability to power up hills and cruise at up to 80 miles per hour, though there's no cruise control. Yes, it's a very noisy cabin that even this optional Pioneer premium audio system equipped with the extra charge rear speaker package can't overcome. Scion loads the IQ with 11 airbags to assuage safety fears. Seating is unique in that there is no glove box, allowing the front passenger to slide up, giving the child or small adult enough room to breathe in the back. The problem isn't headroom back here, it's foot and hip room. With the rear seats up, there's really no carrying capability. But with them folded by removing the headrest first, there's almost 17 cubic feet. Unless you're 6'3 or taller, front seat passengers will have no space issues despite seats that don't height adjust. Just don't take much with you, as stuff at space is almost non-existent. This car has the optional $20 storage package, a plastic slide-out drawer under the passenger seat. Question marks arise when you consider the IQ's $16,000 starting price and its 37 mpg gas mileage. Both are decent, but I'd still expect the former to be lower and the latter to be higher. As tested with a handful of options, this IQ stickers for $17,223. Immeasurably more compelling than a Smart and nearly 20 inches shorter than a Fiat, the IQ brings its version of tiny car edginess to the mini compact segment. For Drive Time on Yahoo Autos, I'm Steve Hammes.